Hey, I'm Scotty T from your Comedy Minute. I have a wonderful comedian named Karen Krentz with me today. Karen, thank you so much for being here. I love it. Thank you so much for having me. I'm oh, so don't to give be me that. You. Oh, you, you're lying. Don't start by lying, for God's no, sake. No, come on. Come on. We were supposed like to your... do this yesterday, but somebody, you know, you know, went a little way wall on me. I did. I did. And right yeah. before we were supposed to go on as well, I did. Yeah, I, I was apologize. mad too. I was madder than, but now you said, you said you had to go to the city and it was so hot. Tell me all about it. Yeah, yeah. No, I have to. So this weather right now yeah. is blazingly hot. I don't mind that it's blazingly hot. However, if I'm not in my backyard swimming in my pool, right, <laughs> if, if, which obviously that can't be all the time. But right, if I right. actually have to be out and about, and I was in the city yesterday. Well, let, yeah. let's, let's, let us let's me stop there because people don't know. Okay. You're in New Jersey. I'm in Jersey. Right. I'm, in, I'm in Pennsylvania. And we're going through what we're experiencing is like 11 days or so of 90 degree temperatures plus. Yes. So go ahead. I'm sorry. I just wanted to. So, no, I'm glad through. we clarified that. I'm glad we clarified right. that. So yeah. So I'm in Jersey and I went into Manhattan. Oh. for a meeting and a dinner. Oh. And I am here to tell you, besides being stuck in the worst traffic ever, right? right. And I already have an issue with road rage, really bad. <laughs> I do, and it's gotten much, much worse. Much does, you worse. does your temper get flaring like a pack of hemorrhoids? So it, it, that's exactly, I mean, you took the words right out of my mouth. Yes, <laughs> you did. Yes. That's me all well, the time. I know, no, it, there's nothing worse than asshole pain. But I, not that I have that problem. There's nothing worse did, than hemorrhoids. I, I mean, honestly, my husband suffers from that. And I mean, that's for a whole nother show. Scott, but that, the right, pain right. Well, that. let's get, I'm sorry. We'll get through the story in New York. And I saw your traffic jam. Yes. You yes. posted pictures. Yeah. Did I? Did I post I pictures? Th I think you did. Maybe. I don't know. Hell, I don't I know. I don't know if I did. I wasn't even, because that's one of the few times where sometimes I will throw some pictures out on social media and ran and right. curse whatever i don't think yesterday i did okay but i will tell you that sitting there in traffic in blazing heat and then once i got to the city it, it literally feels like you're cooking on the sidewalk there is a reason why they call manhattan the concrete jungle yeah. all the smells come up from the from the oh paper. yeah and so it's like hot urine and just <laughs> everyone's bo is coming out you can smell like, the excitement the you can smell I, oh, yeah. the excitement in New York. A hundred percent. I was not on the subway yesterday, which I usually am down underground. But when it's that hot, and I'm also, so you guys I can't know. tell, you can't I tell know. I'm so short. I'm five feet tall. So when I'm on the subway, I'm standing, I'm always like, have someone's armpit right up in my face. Oh, oh. Because I'm all, yeah. And it just, I, you can't do it yeah. to yourself. I, I'm okay. too old. Okay, okay. Let's move on. I know. I know. So... <laughs> What I'm getting Did at. Did tell you is, this is a comedy show, by the way? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, this is comedy. This is comedy. It is. So, it is. Okay. Get to the, oh, Jesus, there, eat it there. You get to the point there. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, the point is being that. If I'm we just teasing the, you. I knew you were. And I'm maybe just, there is no point. I'll way. never be serious. Never. No. Same, by the way. That's good, good, the good. Point. We're on the same page with that. Okay. But this is the thing that the heat, I don't know, you just, everyone just gets super angry and cranky yeah, yeah. and and all, I was just beyond excited to leave. But you're week. home now. And as soon as I'm you home. finish this, finish this little dog and pony act, I run, yeah. you're off to the pool. I, I am. Oh, phew. yeah. I'm gonna, I, I don't know if I'm invited, but I'm coming over. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, well, if you were an MPA, <laughs> sure. Come on over, man. No, I got, I yeah. got another zoom after this one. Well, let's, were you born and raised in New Jersey? So I was not. I came to New Jersey kicking and screaming. I did not want to come to the Garden State. <laughs> um, I'm born and raised in Westchester, which I don't know if you know where that is. Uh, Westchester, Westchester, New York, New York right? I'm from Armonk, which shout okay, out. Yeah, Armonk. I know it. Yeah, that's where I'm from. Okay. And the rest of my family, everyone lives in Manhattan, and I'm really a New Yorker. Okay. I still say that to people, even though I've now been in Jersey for over like 15 years or so. Okay. Yeah, but I came because of my husband. Well, that's a good reason, I think. Uh, I guess. <laughs> Maybe. You yeah. got a house with a pool. It sounds like you're doing pretty good. Yeah, no, no, I did. I, I, I know. Well. I'm I married. I married up, man. I mean, not, we were not good getting for a big you. house. 
off a stand-up comedian salary. That's well, what, <laughs> what money not is so that? Much, really. When did you first start doing comedy? Tell me when that happened. So I started doing comedy and open mics back when I was 18. Wow. Living in Manhattan. Yeah. So I've been at this, I've been at this a while. Okay. And, and I loved it. I mean, the whole um, vibe of comedy back then was completely different from what we're seeing now, just in terms of, especially for women. Yeah. But it was a lot easier to get stage time back in those days. Um, there was a lot more women produced shows in Manhattan. And I found that other women producers were, were um, I'm going to say more willing to put you up. And I did a ton of bringer shows back then. And, and it was great. And that was it. And once I started doing it, I found that there was no stopping. Okay. Can I ask, I always ask this question just because I'm curious and I'm an idiot and I'm an idiot. Mm -hmm. Was there a catalyst when you were 18 or whatever, and you started doing, was there a catalyst? Usually there's something that that says I want to do comedy or to do, you know, like me, I've been a damn idiot my whole life. So I just knew I was going to, so I come from a, a line of funny people. Okay. Right? Everyone in my family's funny. So my grandfather was a producer on NBC. No shit. Show, yeah, that started off That's on wild. radio. My grandmother, my grandfather produced it. My grandmother was the writer. What was the name of the show? I'm sorry. So it's called so it's called The Eternal Light. And okay. it was even before there was TV. And <laughs> they won multiple seem, awards. Right? And it, and they were really funny. My grandparents were really funny. Okay. So every family gathering, it's a bunch of loud Jews. I'm a Jew. Okay. Um, everyone was talking at the same time. So I knew full well I had to be funny right out of the gate. Okay. So you were ignored pretty much by everyone. So so that's kind of what got my foot in the door. I knew I always wanted to do it or try it. And then, um, I mean, if we're really going way back, I went to sleepaway camp starting from when I'm age nine. So I right. already started doing like talent shows and things like that okay. back okay. when I was about 12 or 13 and then okay. and then segued right into into the open mics and you. Okay. Do you have a, and this is a two-parter. Go do on. you have a favorite show and then of course a least favorite show? Okay. Um Do the favorite show because you know I want the least. I want I want the one where, you know, shit went south. Okay. So <laughs> I'm, this is kind of interesting, okay? I'm going to throw this one at you. Okay. I, I, don't know you want to do. I don't know if you've gotten this answer yet, because I know I've nope, watched nope. it. It's going to be great. I actually, for me to get up on stage, right? Right. And this is even when I'm producing, which is a okay. little different from just doing straight up as someone asking me on their show. There's always shows that don't go as planned, right? That's right. a given. Right. There's certain things we can't control. How many people yep. are in the audience? Yeah. The vibe yep. of the actual venue. OK. Yep. I've never really had a horrific show. Obviously, when I started and I bombed and I tanked, I mean, those aren't the best shows. Yeah. It's still not the worst. You know, I still feel like I got something out of them. Right, right, right. I absolutely love at this stage. I can't say this, say, 10 years ago. Every single show. Every single show, regardless of where yeah. it is or who it's with, I feel like there's something to be gained from it, right? So yeah. so in terms of giving you the details of my worst and best show, I feel like stand up now, I'm just happy still to have my like hat in the ring. You know what I mean? Like I'm still happy that it's still going. Yeah. Um, and and well, it's you- still... Mm-hmm. Do you do you feel like because I maybe I miss that? Go on, uh, women. Because and and just so we're clear, yeah. I wish I could have nothing but female comics on this show for the rest of my life. I love. I that. would love to have nothing but women comedians. Yeah. Well, you had Stacy on. I saw you just had Stacy Pressman. Yeah, Stacy's on. Stacy's on the you. floor you tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, and, and tell every female comedian out there, I want them on the show. I want them because I I just think it works better. I, I just like the, the, the interaction between a man and a woman, and, and I get along better with women. And it's the only way I get to talk to pretty women. Okay, so that's very sweet. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sure that's I'm not joking the case, about that way. last part. But yeah, yeah, my yeah, question, yeah. just to be serious, I feel like comedian women comedians, when I think back, you know, it was Joan Rivers, there was only a mm-hmm. handful of female comedians that could get their foot in the door. We're now with Nikki Glaser, and there's a lot more. Yep. Do you feel like it's better now for female comedians or is it still? 
It's, so, I know it's still a, a man's gig. I mean, I get 20 it, guys it, when it's it, on a show. 100%. And, and I feel like as long as we know that, which we do, and I'm saying the collective yeah. way, okay? Right. Um, I think that there's still the same challenges that yeah. were back, say, when I first started this. And now I'm going to age myself, ready? Like 25 years ago. Okay, I'm just throwing this number out. All right? Yeah, it's not true. Uh, no. So... <laughs> It actually, I'm really, <laughs> so it, it is, it, I'm, I, don't I guess, tell people. I know I'm not supposed to. And, no, and no, age is only never a number. Age, woman or age. Go ahead. Age, age is only a number. Yeah. Hell yeah. In your head. But I will say that I'm old. There's more women doing stand up now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Much young, younger women, which I yeah. think is amazing. Okay. Yeah, I do too. So I think in that respect, the fact that there's a whole floodgate of younger women who are actually interested in getting up there. Yeah. It changes the whole dynamic then of the actual ratio of men to women, men yeah. and male to female comedians. Well, and I'm seeing a lot more because, you know, like the Gwen factor has been on and I have, I've been blessed to have a lot of women on. Yeah. Well, I'm seeing a lot more shows with just women. It's just women yeah. comedians on the bill. Which I love, I will say this. So I told you that I also do produce and I'll, right. and I'll you know, talk about a few much shows coming out. The ones that I produce, I specifically love, and I obviously bring on men all the time. Yeah. But I love specifically helping other. It's not even helping. Women are hysterical. Yeah. So if I had my druthers, I I really would rather bring in, and I have. I do all women events that I produce, right. but I love bringing in all female, you know, a whole woman lineup because yeah. I really believe in it, and I think it is still hard to get. You know, some of these shows, and, and I don't want anyone to judge me here, like, it's easy to get up on stage, you know, for a show that maybe you're not getting paid a lot. But when I produce, I actually pay my comics very well, because I think it's actually really, really important. I really do. Yeah, it I is. Comedian's time. I value a comedian's um, talent. And, right. and so for me, if I can produce a certain level of show and give women the stage time, women comics the stage time they deserve, then for me, it's it's a win-win situation. Yeah. Um, well, you have a great philosophy with what you told me there as far as that, you you know, every show is is wonderful. And, and I guess I can yeah. relate because the music business where, you know, every, you know, like, for instance, I was on the road with Dave Matthews Band. So cool. You know, oh, or whatever. And, and every mm -hmm. night's different. You know, the tour bus broke down or this yeah. or there's always, pardon my French, some kind of shit show going on. A hundred, I mean, I, I'll Tickets, share. You know, with... Scotty, I went, I'll never forget this. I wouldn't interrupt, but I think this is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. I, I used to be, like when I worked for RCA or whatever, I remember having an Alan Jackson show, country artist named Alan Jackson. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know Alan. Yep. I, I got, this is, I can't make it up this good. I got to the ticket thing and they said, well, we have backstage passes for you, but we don't have any tickets. Oh, Okay. All right, that's the real issue right see, there. That's the real problem. Where are my people going to sit? <laughs> where are they going to sit? That's I mean, a, you know, and yeah. I, I mean, luckily I had some pool and I got to put 20 chairs up. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, yeah, and imagine all these Alan Jackson fans. I got hardcore Alan Jackson fans. Oh, yeah, no. And I, you're like, I, I'm I sorry. I can't for you, but get I don't have any tickets. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, these little parts, that's what I'm saying. You say the worst show. I just did a show. I'll, I will give you an example. Oh, good, good. I knew you would okay. put one out for me. So I just literally did a show. It was a fundraiser, and it's one that I've done now easily. This is maybe my fourth or fifth year doing it, and it's a really fun one. Okay. Um, for a local public school. Uh, it's a it's really great. fun one, but it's my worst one. Lately. So it's not, this is the thing though. This, it wasn't my worst one. And this is the thing. If you're talking about challenges, like what you're saying. Oh yeah, that was a challenge. Perfect. Definitely wasn't my worst, but this was a challenge and it's happened before. So <laughs> they told me morning of, which we, we've had this before with this actual event. Right. Where they want to take a break in between the comedians for the people that are there to go and drink more, right? So I, I effectually call it, it like a little bar break in between the feature comic and the headliner. And people have already been enjoying themselves and having dinner or whatever leading yeah. up to the comedians coming out. So now I have this issue where we take this break, okay? Right. I actually couldn't get the attention of the people there to circle back around and then 
let me finish out the show so I can go home. Right. I they didn't let me bring the headliner out. I literally had to go and and dim the lights on and off because they were so busy talking and drinking, which That's by right. the way, I fully get it. You okay? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm just I'm I'm laughing. So so again, it, it's not my worst. It's just some of the challenges that pop up. Oh yeah, like, yeah. You know, yeah. It, sit, sitting there on the mic for easily like three to four minutes, trying yeah. to gain the attention. Well, of a, out I of think, about a hundred people. I think what I'm getting here is the producing is one part, but when it's just you up on stage, yeah, you know, you're at peace there, and you can just go. A hundred percent. Yeah. And I, and I really, as I said to you before. And I believe this is that. Hey, wait, wait, wait! Take it easy. I know. There. I know. Honestly, my camera. No, no. I. I... <laughs> so no, and I'm wearing like something super. Yeah, he did. Take it. So, this so is I'm gonna. Sorry. Sorry. Well, this this so... show here, it, it runs all. <laughs> We're not so, going X-rated though. Go ahead. I at this stage of my life, I feel like it's so important to have an outlet, and it's interesting what stand-up comedy has done for me. Say. 10 to 12 years ago versus at this specific stage of my life. I'm yeah. about to be an empty nester. So my kids are almost gone right. out of my house. I have one more year of having to be someone's mom and in, in this under the same roof. So yeah. once that happened, it, it's just the idea that I have this and it's my, my all time love. It's not even a hobby. I just, I, I live for it. So right. it's great that, that it's still there. And for me, it's such a great outlet which right. I don't know if you find that or certainly w with your music career. And I don't know exactly what you're doing in the music business, but to, oh, I sure. don't anymore. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm just doing this. I just enjoy okay. doing this. Yeah, I, got I, mean, fired, so I got fired from my job for telling jokes. So yeah, that's how your comedy on, minute started. Come on, I can't do, come on. No, it's the truth. Anyway, really? let, let's, let's, anyway let's, keep okay. going, let's keep going because I want to get to, I've seen some of your stand up bits and I okay. hate to pull it out so early, but I kind of want to, you know, get you riled up a little bit. Cause I can tell getting you riled up is what I want. I, I like that. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about getting me riled no, up. No, no, I can tell. I, I got a pretty good feel on this. I okay. know people pretty All right. Good. I'm a little bit nervous about what you saw, but go on. No, no, no. Well, I mean, I saw <laughs> some of your stand up bits and I the F this and there's a couple of, you pop yeah. a little bit about your kids, but the word Karen. <laughs> yeah. You mean my name? I know it's not popular right now. Well, it's actually at this point we're kind of at the end of it. Can we just can we just well, no, we're that not. no, we're not. I no, see we it are. It's time to no, we are. No, I'm deep in your bed. No, it's I not. Think it's, it's time to find a new name. <laughs> I have I another think. friend named Karen, and uh, all you got to do is go look at the New York Post. Karen goes wild on airplane. Karen goes. <laughs> Honestly, and and this is the thing. Ready? I think if this is your name, which by the way, side note. I never wanted it. I hated my name even way back when oh, I got, shit. I did. My parents were like, we want to name you Jill or Nancy. I'm like, I wish you did because I never really enjoyed the name Karen, but they liked the way it flowed. My last name is Krenz. Yeah, so it just yeah. has like a nice flow to it, but I've never liked the name. And then out comes this whole thing where yeah. like we're the assholes, right? We're the obnoxious oh, yeah. assholes. Yeah. Where, can I be an obnoxious asshole? A hundred percent. I can. But now that this is even, I can't be oh, an yeah. asshole without, you know, everyone's like, that's, it's, okay, now you're being a Karen. And it's like, no, I'm just fucking being an asshole. It has Guess nothing what? to do with my name. My I'm name just is being Karen. Dead. I have the right to do it. I, listen, I can be an asshole just to be an asshole, having nothing to do with, you know, what my parents named me back in 1971. It has nothing to do <laughs> with, you know, but Karen, now. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. But now I find that I have to rein in. I really do watch my behavior sometimes in just certain because, situations. Just because of the name. Because I don't want to be categorized as well, just yet another Karen. Because I know deep down, and I've had confirmation on this, um, and I don't know maybe if these people were just being nice to me, but they're like, you were the least ca Karen, type yeah, Karen no, I, that, and that, I that agree. we know. I, and, I, and then I'm like, oh, my God, thank you so much. It's really nice. To I'm say. just poking fun. but And I agree because you're just you're a barrel of monkeys. I, I love you. I think you're thank great. Thank you for that. But, you know, it wasn't till I don't know if you do this, but and again, my brain's a sewer hole. It's, I oh, did a lot of drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I still, I got a drink and I got a small crack problem smoking crack light. I know. Well, I mean, okay, also but, happy, yeah, but it awesome. wasn't till yesterday, you know, we were going to do this yesterday and I write down stuff. I have stuff written down. Okay. And I started thinking about that. Mm 
-hmm. What if it was Scott? You know, what if what if some guy did something and every time, oh, that damn Scott, look at him, he's acting yeah. like a Scott. And I thought, my God, that How would that be so <laughs> that would be so right? fucked up. Like would, it just, I, and then it just gets stupid. And then it's also, <laughs> right? Like you're not an asshole. I mean, there's times that I'm sure where you're pissed off. Or, oh or, yeah. Right. <laughs> and then a, and then it's like, um, and there's I'm times a, where I, I definitely am like, I'll I just let it go a little bit. I'm a proctologist that, dream. I'm a proctologist dream. I'm a flame. So I, so. No, I, I honestly no, I I I, I do, listen, you know, I I'll say this. The older oh. I get, my tolerance for bullshit is less. Yes. But I'll say the other, the upside of that is because I'll be, you know, I'm going to be 62 in August. Right. I do have kind of a filter now that yeah. I kind of put my, my grandfather say, put your brain in motion before you put your mouth in, you know, your, you know, before you put your mouth in gear, put your brain in motion. Absolutely. I, I do kind of hold it back a little bit. Where you know, twenty years ago, I'd be like, "You stupid fucking idiot!" You know, oh, yeah. I'd be, I'd be yeah. going off. Yeah, no, I and I get it, and I so I'm exactly like you. I think, and it's also hard as a stand-up comedian where I, I never really had a filtration system, and that I and that I I come by naturally and honestly because my whole family, including my dad who's still alive, has zero filter, which is well, after a while it gets really old, especially when you're in public with him and you're out for lunch in the city, and he just. <laughs> But in a really disgusting way. I think there's but, a story there. Oh, there's many. Go ahead, that's, do one. Whole, do one. Let's, let's say that. Do, do a quick story about dad and lunch. So and dad, study. so dad, um, and he's a little bit uh, on some of my social media. Um, my dad has no filter, and that's great. And he's dating again. He actually met. Oh, and wow. everyone should have this in their eighties. My dad actually met his girlfriend on J date, and okay. You know, yeah, which that in and of itself. Yeah. I never had luck in this dating arena on J Day, J dating for Jews. Right, I never yeah. met anyone. My father, I think this was the second woman he went out with, and they've now been dating for five years. But let's just say, and and some of what I know about what goes on in certain <laughs> parts of their relationship that let's just say I should not know okay. exactly what goes on there. Yeah, and I think the problem is when you're raised in a family that no one has a filter. Yeah, there's no filter. But, yeah, so what you don't realize is is you pick up on that, right? You absorb right. it. Yeah. So then, at, you know, from a very young age, and now I'm learning that that, and I even pass this down to my kids because I have two daughters. I'm like, listen, you really have to think about what yeah. you say sometimes because the repercussions. Right, will come back and and just bite yeah. you in the ass. And so I like you at this stage of life. I think it is important to maybe not let it all go. Like, yeah. remember I was telling you that I I totally have road rage. I would mouth off in a way like I was a six foot tall linebacker of a woman, and I'm like, all I need, I'm yelling at people out my window, flipping the bird. I love. I just I just did that yesterday. The other I, day, you know what? I just did it the other day, and I swear to you, I'm not lying to you, Karen. I thought to myself, we used to, because he was a big guy in a truck. He went by, yes. and I went, "Fuck mm -hmm. you!" Yeah. And, and then I thought, "Oh my god, if he turns around, I'm." Oh fine. yeah, no, I'm no, no. Fine. And then it's a, it's a real issue because at the end of the day, right? People are getting. I don't know so much where you are, but in New York or whatever. Me yesterday with road raging into the hot tub. I'm like, oh my god, you know, you can't scream and yell and think that there's again going to be no because someone just pull out with a gun. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's not. It's not as cut and dry as it was, say, like 10 years ago. If you told someone to fuck you or you'd flip them the bird, <laughs> you pretty much knew, right, Scott? That oh, yeah. the worst repercussions were going to be like, someone's going to yell, no, fuck you. And now it's going to turn into a whole like verbal thing, right? <laughs> a verbal back and forth. Versus now, this asshole, right? And you're in PA. The gun laws are a lot looser. Some schmuck <laughs> next to you. Laws. And they are. You guys have no gun laws. No, um, I know. I'm very I know. little. They're different from New Jersey. So, you know, this prick next to you might truly just, you know, yeah. run versus that. That really yeah. wasn't the case, they well, you. No, we didn't even add in the social media aspect. No, we did not. And they go on to Facebook and post about some Karen. You can't. Are you ready? You can't put <laughs> I'm anything I'm sorry. on social media 
anything and also you know this too right forget about like facebook and i love to tweet out things that are a little crazy okay um but the second you start putting it in writing definitely in social media yeah even, like have you written like a nasty text or email yeah. or whatever? the second you throw it out there in writing you're so screwed my brother says that all the time once it's in yeah. writing once yeah. it's in writing you can't take it back yeah or, yeah if you're yelling, especially you're twitter 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 <laughs> No, you're done. You're you're right yeah. there. Yeah. You can delete it, but I guarantee you, someone screenshotted. You know, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 a different world we're living in. But let's let's try and because we don't have a lot of time left. But I want to yeah, make no, sure let's wrap it up. we come. No, now take it. I'm in charge here. I'll say when we okay. wrap it up. God damn okay, it. Okay. Okay. Don't force me. Don't. You get my temper flaring like a pack of hemorrhoids, Karen. Go on. Go on. All you right. Look, I, I I know you have a YouTube channel, Facebook, That's obviously, great. Instagram, X. Do you do TikTok? I do, and and you need to go check out my. I'm TikTok. good. I'm good. I'm, really, that's why I brought it up because yeah, I'm yeah. going to include. Check out my TikTok. I'm, I'm going to include all stuff. the links to all I, of your stuff and a website. I, I got your website. I got everything. We're going to do that. Do you have comedians now, or like comedians that inspired you when you were younger, or comedians you like now? Yeah. So so I'm a bit old school. Okay. So he's here are my favorites. I my all time favorite. Robin Williams and I got to yeah. see him live in the city. Did you I really? he was I've never seen anything like it. How many bottles of water he went through. Yeah. He did solid material for he must have gone on for like an hour and 15 minutes, hour 20. Yeah. Sweating like a pig. It was perfection. I love Louis C.K. I've also seen him live. I'm a huge fan. I love his show. All right. Regardless of what he's done or not done or whacked off or right. whatever, that's very mild. <laughs> um, believe you me, there's certain male comics yeah, I heard about and, that. Done, and done much worse. Whacking off, I'm like, okay, whatever. Okay, yeah. I'm still a huge fan. Um, I love Joan Rivers. She's always been my idol. Let me see if I and have it here. Do I still have I one? love Joan. And I and when I found out oh, she passed God. and why she passed, and it you know, I, I did cry. It, it made me really sad. I, I had mean, Helene Witt on who wrote jokes for Joan Rivers and also oh, Tom Padovano. Okay. Is the one who that, wrote jokes who wrote jokes for Joan is, Rivers. Okay. How great I had is a that? picture, I had a, an album up that I did with Elaine the other day. That's why I was looking for it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. But yeah, I want to just say one other thing because, you know, and that's what I find with these interviews. I have moments where the drugs subside. When you mentioned Robin Williams, one of my favorite quotes, and I use it all the time. Robin Williams used to say, laughter is the enema of the soul. I love it. And and I've held on to that all these years. I don't know when he said it or where I heard it. Yeah. It was in one of his comedy bits, early comedy bits. And I was like, man, that's so true. And not for it's everybody. So Some people, I, I just did one the other day where the guy was talking about, you know, people that go to the comedy club and they sit there like this and thinking, why did you come? You know, usually for whatever reason, always sitting in my front row. I'm like, do you realize <laughs> you're actually at yeah, a comedy there, show? You know, right there are you're people... not sitting in your living room. You're not in your living room right now. You're actually at a comedy show. Yeah. And, and there are people, is... yeah, there are people that just, you yeah. know, like I remember being out recently and I told a joke and eight people were out and another guy says, why don't you do like a real joke, buddy? I, I can. I, no, okay, I, well, those say. seven, like maybe the problem's with you, asshole. Exactly right. <laughs> and the second you even start going back and forth with a heckler, it's just you can't even give them like one second of your stage time. No, I know. I, I'm just talking. I was out. I, I was at the liquor store. Okay. Well, see, there. <laughs> even better. Even better. Yeah. 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 Um, well, look, we don't have a lot of time, but I want to make right. sure, Karen, that you cover everything that you want to cover, because that's my promise to people. Whatever you want to mention. And then, of course, at the end, we're going to do your comedy minute. OK, so anything right. that you want to mention shows you got coming up. Uh, obviously, I'm going to put all your links to I, everything you have, but anything that you want to mention. Yeah. So I have a really fun show coming up that this one I've been producing now specifically at this venue for um, like five years. Okay. And we're now swinging back around. It's South and Pine. And it is a phenomenal restaurant. The chef owner, who's a woman, Leah, Chef Leah. Okay. Gassion, who I know I'm killing her last name, but she also won on the show Chopped, which I don't know if you ever saw that show, but she I is sure did. amazing and a life force of a human. I'll mention okay. I'll mention the the restaurant and her and everything. I'll, I'll hashtag that in this in this video. Please do. That would be amazing. Yep. 
Um, so that's coming up. That is, and I just want to make sure I wrote the date down. So it's Sunday, July 21st. Okay. And I'm producing it. Um, and again, for details, you can go on my website or my Instagram and it'll be. Yeah, this will be up before July 21st. So we'll help promote it this way. I would love it. And it's a three course. So what makes it a little difference in the average show, restaurant show, of which there's a ton. Okay. So she, the menu, she switches it up literally monthly but does a specific three course dinner wow. for this, this event and it sells out within like literally like a, about a week okay and it, so we haven't she's put up on social media i haven't announced a lineup yet but i would love for if someone's local okay. to morris county new jersey or new york city um or if you want to come in from pa uh, I would love. To have, <laughs> I would love to have you there. I'm at Rhino Comedy Club in Suffer, New York, which is one okay. of my favorite comedy clubs. Okay. There I'm ongoing, so I'm usually there at least once or twice a month. Okay. Good. I have a gig coming up there, um, second week of August. I also travel a bit in the summer, so I do have to say I won't be doing as many gigs because, on a very selfish yeah. level, Scott, it's you have an cool. August birthday. It's I have a July cool. birthday. I it's love I'm in the pool and I actually really <laughs> love the beach. So I try I to know. actually relax a little bit. I Everybody know. takes take it easy in the summer. The there's not as much stuff going on in the summer. It's there's not. Well, Karen, I hate to do it. I always have a problem, but I'm praying Scott, you're gonna come through minutes. for me. Listen, Karen Krentz, your comedy minute. Please have something for me, my friend. Of course I do, Scott. Of course I do. God bless you. God bless you. Exactly. Karen Krentz, exactly. your comedy minute. Go ahead. Thanks, man. So I have to say, I've been with my husband for a very long time. Okay. okay so over, over 20 years, which that even is a little bit ridiculous. Amazing. Congratulations. Thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah. So, so this is the thing. For years, Scott, I've been telling him, like, you know what? You seem to stop breathing when you're sleeping. Like, and not even just like a little, like, tiny snoring issue. It really sounds like you stop breathing and you're, and you're no longer inhaling and exhaling. I've been saying this, Scott, for over 20 years. We circle back around, right? And he's on a boys trip, his annual boys fishing trip, okay? Okay. And one of his best friends is like, you know what? I can't sleep in the same bed with you anymore. Your your snoring is god awful. And I have to tell you something. I think you have like a real problem on your hands. Something seems to be going on, like say one or two in the morning where (laughs) it's not regular snoring. It sounds like you've stopped breathing. And I'm actually worried for you. I'm worried for your life. All right. So then circle back around. My husband's in bed with me. This is now going back about two months ago, Scott. And I look over. I didn't even know that this was okay. Right. He's got something hooked up into his nostrils. And he's got these things on his chest, right? The little discs or whatnot. Right. So he's now decided it had nothing to do with what I said. 20 but years. When he got it literally was because of his best friend on this fishing trip. Okay. <laughs> so I'm no longer going to sleep with you in the same bed, not in a gay way, but in just a sleep. Yeah. Bed. Okay. All right. So now here we are. And my husband goes for the sleep study. And what happens, Scott? Are you ready? Do you know how many times my husband stops breathing in literally like the, the span of a minute? It, it was like off the charts, truly. All right. So, <laughs> So now the man has got a CPAP machine and that is just so fucking hot in and of itself. Like, I don't know <laughs> what your sex life is like, Scott, but let me tell you what mine is. Okay. All so right. really, I've been with the same man for 23 years, which is a lot of the same sexual sameness. Right. Right. Really no adding any like nouveau positions, <laughs> lubrications, nothing. It's the same fucking sex with the same dick. For 23 years. <laughs> When you then throw in a CPAP machine. Yeah. Stuff. Okay, wait. So the first night, right? He straps it on and he's English. He's like, okay, with with the thing coming out of the top of his head, this tube that looks like it's coming out the center of the top of his head with the mask on. And he's like, okay, oh. You, yo, yeah, no, you find me so hot right now, don't you, dude? And I'm like, I've never, ever been so attracted to you. Okay, but this is this is really the end of my minute, is that it has nothing to do with, obviously, I'm glad he's going to be around for a while, because I can't make it on my comic salary. But I will tell you this, that the beauty of the CPAP is that when he puts it on, and you'll, you'll appreciate this guy, I don't even know if you have a partner, but the best part of the CPAP is he can no longer talk once it's on yeah. his face. 
So by the time, I don't know about you, my window shuts for business. I have nothing more to say to my husband. Say it about yeah, yeah. like eight o'clock. I'm like, I have nothing left for you. He puts that fucking CPAP on. All right. And, yeah. and nothing. And not only do I not understand what he's saying, but the man actually shuts up there. That, that's it. There's no more conversation. <laughs> that is it. So there this, you go. That, there you go, my friend. That, I'm that, telling that, you. That, that right there is winning. He's he's actually able to breathe. He's going to live for a few more years. And he shuts the fuck up every night <laughs> at about 8.30, such that wow. I can go to sleep. Wow. I'm yeah. getting misty. No, I'm, I know. I'm getting misty. The you are, the... <laughs> I know. I know. I knew you would be. I knew you would be. But yeah, so that's it. I recommend well, Karen, every moment to maybe Karen, get Karen, I hate to do it. We're running out of time. But I want to thank you. I think you're fantastic. If it's okay, go on. I would love to have you come back. I would love to come back. Okay. We're going to do this again real soon because you're just, there's so much, we had so much to cover and we, and it was all great stories, but I, I'd love to have you do a lot more of your comedy. I would it, love to do more of my we'll comedy. Do that. We'll do that in the next one. I just talk too damn much. It's all my fault. Yeah, let's do a little stand up. I would, I would love we'll it. We'll do that. We'll do that next time. I, I Like I say, I just have the, free version of zoom so we're going to run out of time great thank you so much guys for having me on yeah stay put for a second i'm going to stop the recording we'll chat you know for a minute or two off the air awesome thank, thank you so much thanks so much i appreciate it my pleasure